Hey everyone and welcome back. Uh, next up we have Fred, our CTO from Parity, and he's going to be doing a talk on what the heck is Substrate. LA, take it away, Fred. All right, thank you very much. Hey everyone and uh, welcome to this very high level introduction of Substrate where I try to explain in uh, relatively simple terms what Substrate is as well as a bit of a background on why Substrate exists. So uh, I know Gam already covered a little bit of this. Uh, hopefully, I'm not too uh, repetitive. But uh, really, first of all, I just want to kick off by saying that Substrate is fundamentally three things. It's a framework for building blockchains. It's an open source software community of builders. And it's a developer platform. And I'll cover what I mean by these things in the rest of the talk. But I also want to say that if you catch my talk from the last Sub-Zero Online event, actually dig deeper into the first part, the framework part there. But Gav already covered that part quite a lot as well. So first of all, um, again, sort of uh, uh, repeating a little bit of, of what Gav was saying, but I think it's important to know where Substrate comes from, as I think it's relevant to put into context what it's for. You know, Parity start as a company uh, started working on blockchain technology over five years ago now. We started by building an Ethereum client that at one point, what point was used by more than 80% of miners on the Ethereum network. Then we built a Bitcoin client. Then we built a Zcash client together with the Zcash Foundation. And as we set out to build Polkadot, you know, this is our big bet on what third gen blockchain is going to be. We actually just started building another blockchain client, like Cam said. Somewhere along the way in building Polkadot, we realized that we were doing the same things over and over again. A lot of blockchains have a lot of sameness to them. And the, the thing that sets them apart is really just the state transition function, the piece of code that describes how to execute a block and go from one state of the world to the next state of the world. And so together with some insights and innovation brought by wanting to have on-chain governance in Polkadot, we realized that we could actually build a really powerful framework around these primitives. So as we built Polkadot, we took this detour into building substrate and then building substrate in the substrate frame, building Polkadot in the substrate framework. So in essence, uh, substrate is a product of many years of expertise building and, and innovation, more years than have been put into building substrate because of this long background and history. So let's talk briefly about what substrate as a framework really gives you. I like to use analogies to try to explain things, even though sometimes they might be a bit hit or miss. An analogy that I've been using recently is that we can think of a blockchain client as this engine. There are a lot of components to an engine, and they're all crucial to the engine running. But this little thing that I've highlighted in green here, that's the brains behind the engine. Uh, and it controls like fuel injection and a bunch of other stuff. In our analogy here, Substrate is all like all of these more or less static parts. In the brains of the blockchain, this one small part, um, in Substrate, we call that part the runtime or the state transition function. <clears throat> and substrate, substrate lets you easily write that runtime. And we provide a bunch of standard components that you might want in your runtime to make it easier for you to write it. But you basically don't have to worry about all the rest. So what is Substrate as a framework really like? I'm going to present a few high-level things uh, that you get with Substrate uh, that I don't think you get with any other blockchain framework in existence. First of all, Substrate is modular. Gav talked about this. It's really a core value of the framework. It's built from the ground up to be extensible and modular. You can easily choose consensus alg algorithm. You can build more. Um, but the runtime logic itself is expressed in WebAssembly, Wasm. And this gives like the ultimate flexibility. And we have Frame, uh, the framework that we provide for writing runtimes. Currently, there are 44 palettes, uh, as of last count, uh, that are maintained by Parity. But there are dozens more of these really high quality palettes in the community. Substrate is also scalable. It's not just a framework that makes it easy to innovate and experiment, but you can actually ship state-of-the-art, competitive, production-grade blockchains with it. In our current benchmarking, it's capable of scaling to 1,500 per second on a single blockchain that is without sharding. 
this benchmark was done in a realistic scenario, scenario with many validators, all geographically distributed with transactions that are non-correlated and independently signed and executed. And as Gav uh, sort of teased, we think we can get this much higher. But there's also a few other key ways that it is scalable. Using WebAssembly, what your runtime logic is expressed in, it itself was designed to be small, simple, and easy to compile, making it really close to native speed. In practice, it's orders of magnitude faster than something like the EVM. But what's more, because we essentially treat runtime code as trusted code, we don't need to do metering. This is a thing in smart contracts where you do accounting to you know, figure out how much gas is spent. And that's a very costly operation that we don't have to do here, making it much faster. But it's not just the runtime that needs to be fast. Everything needs to be fast. And so that's a key reason why we built everything in Rust. The underlying framework and everything is in Rust, because that's basically as fast as you can get. There's also a ton of research and conscious design that has gone into making the underlying protocols fast, from networking to choice of encoding and many other things. But uh, I think most importantly, almost, is that you have the power to make your chain domain specific. Again, this is the modularity and flexibility. You can make it do only what you need it to do and not be some general purpose machine that is slow because it's generic. This is similar in, in principle to something like optimistic rollups, where you depend on some other chain for data availability, but then building your own execution logic that's optimized for one specific use case. But there's actually one more way that it's scalable. It's socially scalable. Substrate is fundamentally upgradable. This is one of the key insights that came from Polkadot. To make a blockchain socially scalable, you have to make it governable. For governance, you need to be able to have non-contentious network upgrades. And Substrate is made from the ground up to be upgradable. Upgrading blockchains traditionally has been extremely hard requires a massive coordination effort. And we've seen this in other ecosystem where essentially, eventually, it stalls. But because runtime logic is stored on chain, meaning that the runtime logic can control how it can change itself, gets very meta, um, we can alleviate all these and have truly forkless upgrades. But with storage migration, migrations, they also enable, enable you to make changes even to underlying cryptographic primitives like the hashing algorithm easily future-proofing your blockchain. And so with the governance palace that we have and all the different tools that exist here, Substrate really helps you create these novel mechanisms for community governance of the, the shared social good that is a blockchain. By using Substrate, you also buy into a massive amount of security work that's been put into it. There is literally hundreds of thousands of dollars that have gone into auditing Substrate by third-party auditors and is already securing more than 5 billion USD on several deployed mainnet blockchains. And if you were to build something yourself, this is something that's out of reach even for the most well-funded startups. Let's move on to talk a little bit about Substrate as an open source community and why that matters. So Substrate has over 500,000 lines of code across 10 repos, and that's not even counting all of the repos. This is one of the largest Rust code bases in existence, which has both pros and cons. On the upside, we get a, quite a lot of natural interest from Rust developers, and generally, Rust developers are really good developers who like tackling the sort of challenges that exist in blockchain world. On the downside, it's a very large code base, and <laughs> that carries its own challenges. But seriously, because we have so much Rust code, we're actually not just contributors to the blockchain ecosystem. We're also rather large contributors to the Rust ecosystem. We have a lot of non-blockchain-specific code that is getting pretty wide usage outside of the blockchain world. Things like libp2p, JSON RPC, our Wasm whole stack of work, Parity Wasm, our library, our Wasm serialization library, has been download downloaded more than 1 million times from Crates.io. This not only means that these libraries can be considered robust and high quality, but also that if you join the Substrate open source ecosystem, you have the opportunity to work on important things in a very broad scope. Across these 10 repos, we have more than 170 ex contributors external to Parity. 
which means that there's quite a large ecosystem of people already that can help and support you in whatever you want to do with Substrate. And last but not least, talking about the kind of impact that you can have working on our code, it's been used or forked by tons of other blockchain projects in this space, something that we're very proud of. Finally, let's talk about what I mean with developer platform. As far as I can find in my research of the term, uh, it originates from Linux being called a developer platform. Platform there in the sense of an operating system and application ecosystem. It has significantly expanded since then, though. .NET calls itself a developer of platform, but even lately, you know, Twitter and Facebook tell themselves that they are developer platforms. I actually mean it largely in the .NET sense. However, I think it's possible to recognize a developer platform as something that has the three following characteristics. It has to serve multiple different types of consumers, like developers, partners, users, probably has developer advocates, tries to connect different platforms, has events and hackathons run for it, probably not just by the company making it too, right? I think it has to facilitate a different type of value exchange than typical direct sales. So an example of this would be a marketplace, but also selling discovery tools or connecting third parties. And I think it has to have a shared set of common standards through APIs, documentation, terminology, and more. But uh, and I, something that I, I think it should have as well is that whoever is building it is building stuff on top of that platform their self, themselves. They should be dogfooding these standards. Like, is Twitter built on the Twitter developer platform? No then it's not a developer platform. It's just Twitter trying to profit from your application. So what does Substrate as a developer platform look like? Well, I think we actually hit all of those three points I mentioned. But we can really break down what Substrate as a developer platform offers in a bit of a life cycle, from building a blockchain to building an app on top of that blockchain to deploying and finally maintaining and monitoring a network. Substrate offers a whole host of tools, libraries, frameworks, and applications in each of the stages of this blockchain's life. This really goes beyond just Substrate itself as a framework. These are things that take years and years to build, something that you get for free if you build on the Substrate developer platform. And remember, not all of these things are delivered by Parity and depend on Parity as a company. Many of these tools and libraries are offered by the general Substrate open source community. So really, Substrate as a developer platform is not really just about Substrate, the framework. It's about enabling a new, whole new kind of application to be built. So it's allowing a whole new level of innovation, drastically lower time to market, drastically lower time to experiment, which I think is really important. And speaking of innovation and bringing things to market and the kind of community and ecosystem we have, Substrate has already attracted a pretty massive set of builders using the Substrate developer platform. No matter what kind of application you're trying to build or what vertical you're trying to innovate in, you'll be in very good company in the Substrate community. It really is this community that makes Substrate so great. So that's it for me, actually. Um, thank you very much for listening. And I'll be taking questions, uh, some, some here. I have three minutes left until the next speaker. Um, but I'll also be in Discord after if you want to chat more or have an, any other questions. Cool. So there's two questions here that I'm going to ask you. Um, the first one is, could Team Parity possibly create an infographic comparing Substrate with other existing frameworks, i.e. show the parallels between parts that needed and jargon used? Um, for sure, we could create that. Um, and I think there actually are a couple of good ones. Personally, I think there's a good reason for parity, for parity specifically to not create that, because it will, will obviously be biased. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, and I, I think it's what is important to us is not necessarily what is important to people out there. So I think uh, if this comes from the community itself, it's more valuable. But if the community doesn't produce it, then sure, we, we can. <laughs> cool. And then the next question is, can parachains enough nodes be preserved to support decentralization? Uh, yes. So I guess um, 
the question is really like about validators and, and can it really support enough validators and enough distribution of nodes to support proper decentralization across the relay chain and parent chains. Um, and this is something that, um, you know, the Web3 Foundation research team has put a ton of work into and the answer is yes, we, we really believe it's not actually, um, uh, not only possible, but like we, we see this happening already. We have a massively valuable network with hundreds uh, of, of validators on Kusama. It's you know, hundreds more, and we can easily get to the numbers that we want to, to uh, actually be able to support property centralization here. Cool. And I guess um, that's uh, it, and we can move on to, to Discord and let the yeah. other speaker jump on. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Fred. I'll see you all in the next session. Thank you very much.